Hello and welcome to the France Van Catter interview. I'm Eduardo Quay. Even before the Snowden affair, relations between Russia and the United States were going through a very difficult phase, to say the least. But the case of the 30-year-old former intelligence agent has led to such a rapid deterioration of the relationship that some analysts believe it is useless to try and rebuild a strategic partnership between the two countries at this time. Here to analyze where the relationship stands is Matthew Rojanski, head of the Kennan Institute at the Woodrow Wilson Center in Washington, D.C., and an expert on U.S. relations with Russia. Thank you very much, Mr. Rojanski, uh, for joining us today. I'd like to start by asking you if you think President Obama will cancel his scheduled summit with Putin in September and whether he should take such a step. Uh, well, you know, uh, as Yogi Berra once said, uh, it's very difficult to make predictions, especially about the future. Um, so I can't predict it 100 percent. But what I can say is it is much, much more likely now that the, um, the that Obama will not participate in the G20 summit uh, in the than G20 it was, let's summit. say, a couple of months. That's right. Remember, the G20 summit is taking place in St. Petersburg. Right. Uh, and then the idea was that he would have uh, a, a separate bilateral meeting with President Putin. You know, my sense would be that Obama would simply determine he has other things to do. It's possible he could show up for the G20 summit and explicitly snub Putin. Uh, my read is that's not a very Obama move. That would be uh, needlessly provocative. That's, that, that's adding an additional layer of insult to the injury. My guess is he just wouldn't show up if he's not going to show up. But there'd be a reason for that. And, and the White House has been pretty clear about what that reason is. Um, they have said as clearly as any uh, bureaucracy ever says uh, that after the decision to grant Snowden political asylum, at least temporary political asylum in Russia, um, it raises questions about whether the Russians uh, are going to deliver on a wider range of important issues in the relationship. And I would think that those issues would include uh, the president's very high-profile nuclear agenda, where he needs Moscow's cooperation, uh, progress on Syria, progress on issues around Iran, Afghanistan, uh, and a number of other issues that have been on the table for, for years now. But and if why the president would, why would doesn't he, uh, expect... I'm sorry, but why would he uh, not go to the G20 meeting where a lot of different issues are uh, would be discussed with, uh, with 20 countries? W wouldn't it just be enough to cancel the bilateral summit? Well, again, I, I don't disagree with you. There are a lot of other issues on the table for the G20, but you have to look at this from a diplomatic perspective. If Obama shows up for the G20 summit in Russia, hosted by Putin, and Putin has explicitly invited Obama to have a bilateral meeting, but then he refuses to have that bilateral meeting, that is a level of insult and provocation which, at least in my instinct, is very unlike this president. You know, this is no drama Obama. I think what he would prefer to do uh, if he has to do it, if he has to cancel the bilateral meeting with Putin, my guess is he would prefer to simply uh, find something more productive to do with his time than travel halfway around the world. Do you agree that uh, he should cancel uh, his trip to uh, Russia? Is that a good thing for the future of the relationship? Question. No, it's bad. It's bad. I, th I think it would be a mistake at this point. Uh, to cancel his participation in either. You rightly said the G20, there, there's plenty of other issues on the table, plenty of other world leaders would be there. Uh, in terms of the meeting with Putin, you know, I think it's a mistake to view engagement with Russia or with any other country, but certainly with Russia, uh, which is a critical partner on a lot of important issues for the United States, as a reward for Russia doing what America wants it to do. I think instead you look at engagement as one of a set of tools that the United States can use. Uh, some of those tools are maybe coercive, uh, but others are diplomatic. Uh, and if you don't use that tool, you know, then it's a mistake. You're not using all of the resources at your disposal uh, to try and get at your interests in the relationship. So I think he can go. Uh, I think it may be a very unproductive meeting, to be quite frank, but I think you got to keep the door open. Um, and I think if it is the case, if it is the case that um, this is a temporary flare-up in hostility between Russia and the United States, which is possible, I think it serves uh, domestic purposes in Russia right now, then the summit in September 
might be, uh, if you will, uh, the, the autumn cooling wind, the thing that sort of allows these flames to die out uh, and maybe enter into a kind of a, a more normal, more stable period uh, in later in the fall and in the winter. I, I hope that that would be the case. Because there seem to be two schools of thought at the moment in Washington. One school of thought is simply that uh, the relationship is in such bad shape that there's nothing much that uh, can be done not to improve it, at least for the moment. And they point the people who, uh, people, uh, who say this, analysts in Washington, say, for example, that uh, Russia will receive the nuclear uh, 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 Obama's uh, decision to uh, or negotiate a reduction in nuclear armaments, that it was received very, very coldly, that uh, Russia is unlikely to put any additional pressure on Iran, and that, uh, basically speaking, uh, the two countries really don't have much to speak about. Others say, no, we really have to, we can't just let Snowden derail this, uh, this uh, this relationship. It's much too important. We have to engage the Russians where we can. And they even argue that actually behind closed doors, some progress had been made. Yeah. Yeah. Here's the thing. Uh, international relations are really complicated. The U.S.-Russia relationship is not something that can be boiled down to one episode. It's not just about Snowden. It's not just about Syria. It's not just about nuclear. Uh, it's about all of those things, and it's about more. It's about economic relations. Uh, it's about human relations. It's about moral issues. Uh, it's about history. It's about personal relations between the presidents. It's a very, very complicated relationship. So the bottom line is, yes, a lot of individual episodes have gone wrong. And I think it's, it's possible to conclude from that that we're not at a very positive or propitious time uh, in ties between Moscow and Washington to try to open up uh, new ambitious agenda items. The example, of course, of the president's proposal on further reductions, bilateral reductions in nuclear weapons, is quite glaring. He made a, a big proposal in a big speech in Berlin at the Brandenburg Gate. You know, that was sort of his moment. Uh, and the Russian reaction was, yeah, thanks, but no thanks. Um, we're really not interested in further reductions right now. Uh, that doesn't mean that there's nothing else on the agenda. Look, the Russians have got to maintain security and stability in Central Asia. Uh, Afghanistan is a part of that equation. NATO is drawing down in Afghanistan this coming year. Uh, we have got to work together on that problem. The Russians are not interested in seeing the Iranians get a nuclear weapon. It heavily destabilizes a region which they're already concerned about the stability. Uh, we've got to have a dialogue with the Russians on that. And then let's not forget, we do have a bilateral relationship which exists outside the security realm as well. You know, we've got a new agreement, relatively new agreement on visas. Uh, we're still trying to deal with the fallout from the recent problem over the Magnitsky list uh, and the ban on adoptions. We've got to solve those problems. And we have an economic relationship which is worth anywhere between uh, 30 and 50 billion dollars, uh, depending on when you check on it. It's small change compared to relations with China uh, or other large economies, but there's still potential there. Russia's got 140 million consumers, uh, and they tend to like to buy American products. Let me let me ask you. You mentioned Iran. Do you think that Russia is uh, underestimating the eventual danger that a uh, nuclear Iran could pose to Russia? <clears throat> no, I don't think so. I, th I think the Russians are actually very clear-eyed about what a nuclear Iran means. On the one hand, they don't like the idea that another country is going to get nuclear weapons. They don't like the idea of runaway nuclear proliferation. On the other hand, they didn't like it when Pakistan got a nuclear weapon or India got a nuclear weapon. And they saw the degree to which the United States just accepted that outcome. Uh, and their feeling is very much like with Snowden, very much like with Syria, it's you're not the only ones who get to dictate outcomes but, but around the world. But if that's the, the case, why is there United States? Why, why is there a feeling that uh, that Russia is not really putting a, a pressure on Iran, or is not really cooperating so that it doesn't get a, a nuclear bomb? Look, to some degree, that is true. It, it is true that the Russians are not pushing as hard. Part of that is their strategy. I think they believe, and rightly so, uh, that they have influence with Iran to a large degree because they are seen as Iran's partner. It's not that they're trusted friends uh, or that they're automatic allies, but simply that they're willing to deal and talk to the Iranians and to do business with the Iranians when the West is imposing sanctions. Uh, and that gives them leverage with Iran. And by the way, that's very useful for the West. You know, when we do have a meeting of the minds, as we have had before on Iran, 
Russia is the one with the leverage. So Russia is able to actually apply that pressure and get results. And so if, if Russia if loses I, uh, that leverage... If, we're, we're, uh, we're running a little bit out of time, but if I read you correctly, it sure. seems to me that you think that there is, that, that, that there is a good uh, possibility of reaching agreement on a number of subjects and that the two countries should remain engaged and that if Obama cancels the summit, it would be a mistake. Is that correct? Uh, that's a correct summation. The bottom line is... We know what the negative road looks like. We have been down this road before. There is nothing good that comes out of this road. You don't even sleep well at night, frankly, because of the threat to global security. The positive road is the only opportunity, and we can't go down that road unless we keep the gates open. And I think that's why you've got to do the summit. But you think he's going to cancel it, and that is going to be a mistake. I, I can't guarantee it. At this point, you know, I think it's about 50-50, to be honest with you. It's entirely possible that an agreement can be struck behind the scenes on Snowden. Uh, the situation could change dramatically on the ground in Syria. Uh, or, you know, who knows, uh, there could be uh, some kind of provocation or terrorist incident which would remind the two countries, just like the Boston attacks reminded us, that we really do need to work together. Um, otherwise, we're going to miss huge opportunities. Okay. I'm afraid we're out of time, Mr. Rojanski. Thank you very much for joining us here on the interview. And please do stay tuned for more news on France 24.